In my last standing Liberty quarter hunt, I said that I didn't pick up any of the George Washington quarters because they didn't have enough cash on hand to do that that day. That being said, I asked them to break up the bag into two different bags for me, 1951 and newer, and 1950 and older. This bag is 1951 and older. Hey everyone, it's Rob Rob Finds Treasure, and like I said in the intro, I got this bag of quarters from my silver guy. I couldn't really afford to get all of the quarters he had in stock last time, so I picked up the Standing Liberty quarters, which you guys probably already saw that video. If you haven't, the link's up here. The good news is, I picked up some of these quarters today, and I asked if I can get all the 1950 and earlier's, and then I'll get the 51 through 64's in a couple of more days. He said no problem. So, figured, we dump it out and take a look at the goodies we got. Now, I'm really excited about going through this bag. I'm not lying. He said he picked it up from a gentleman who pretty much turned in his collection. So we had them all counted and stacked in stacks of 20. I think there's 145 is what we had counted in here. So 145 George Washington quarters. They should all be pretty much 1950 and older. So obviously I'll be looking for a lot of key dates if I can get lucky enough to score a key date. I'll be looking mainly for several different quarters that I'm still looking for for my collection. I need some 37s and 38s with mint marks. I need a 1955 out of Philly, believe it or not. And then of course, we would love to check for some errors and varieties. Obviously I'll be looking for the 34P with the double die. I'll be checking for the 1942 Denver double die verse, the 43 double die verse, and uh, the 43S double dive verse. And then of course, if there's any 1950Ds in here, we'll be checking for the D over S. That being said, there's a lot of semi key dates I wouldn't mind finding as well. Obviously the 36D comes to mind, any 32D or S's come to mind. We'd love to find any 38 because the 38 years are lower mint. And we would love to also find any 1949s as well as any coins that I still needed for my album and better than average circulated shape. Like this 1939 is not that bad. It may even upgrade from the one I have in my album. So, first things first. We've talked a lot. Let's get them sorted by year. We're gonna go from 32 if we get so lucky all the way to 50 and hope we find some goodies. This is how it lays out. And honestly, there's some years in here that could be pretty good. So we've got a couple of 1932s some 34s, bunch of 35s, bunch of 36s, a few 37 and 38s. So I'm excited to see if there's mint marks on them. That 38's pretty toasty, but the one behind it is in pretty decent shape. Some 39s, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, and then a 50 and a 52. So not, not very many 40s in this batch of the later 40s. Wish we'd have got some 49s, but maybe in a future one. All right, well, that's what we got so far. I'm pretty excited to go through these. We're gonna start right on camera, right, right now, and see if we have a mint mark on either of these 32s. This one's not in bad shape either. This one's worn pretty slick. Let's check the worn slick one first. Yeah, it looks like no mint mark on that. And of course, why would you expect one? Obviously, for those wondering, Washington quarter key dates, 32D or 32S. Look at those low mintages. Unbelievable. We can pray for a mint mark on this one as well. So as expected, no mint mark, but I am not upset at finding a couple of 1932s in a bulk buy. I almost never see them, ever. A 32 Philadelphia minted quarter is still in very good eight condition, right around $8. And I think this qualifies in very good eight. It's a little bit of rim damage up top, but uh, either way, pretty cool quarter to find in a bulk buy. Now that we eliminated any good finds in the 32 year, we're gonna move on to the 34. There's not a lot here, but the one thing we're looking for is the 34 double die obverse out of Philadelphia. I'm gonna put those under the scope and see if I see anything. If there's something worth mentioning, I'll let you know. I'll tell you though, this front one, 
That's not a bad look in 1934, and it is a Philadelphia as well. So we'll be checking it for the doubling, but that's in really great shape. So unfortunately, no doubling in the 34 quarters. They're all Philadelphia men as well. 35, there's really nothing to check for, but I will go through them and pick out the best couple of the bunch and see what mints we got as well. So we're able to squeeze out PD and S mint uh, quarters from 1935. This is the S, pretty terrible shape. This is the better of the 235Ds. Pretty worn as well. And then we got a few decent 35 Philadelphia minted ones. And actually, this might even upgrade in my album because the one I have is not in very good shape. Although, that's nothing to write home about as well. Now we're going to move on to the 1936 here. We're really looking for a 1936 Denver or San Francisco. Well, as expected, we ended up not finding the 36D, which was a key date. But we did have two 36Ss, which are semi-key dates. This one's really worn slick. This one's in a little bit better condition. Got some rim damage, but that's expected on an older one. Either way, 36S, not easy to come by. And the 36 Philadelphia we selected is in pretty good shape as well, might upgrade. So this 36 Philadelphia, we'll put it up here. And it's always good seeing two semi-keys in one of the years. Now let's check the 37s. We're looking for more mint marks on the back of those few. So on the 1937s, I'm pretty excited. We had three from Philadelphia. I did check them for the 37 double die burst. They're not, but that's a pretty nice 1937 Philadelphia. And on the fourth one we had, it just so happens, we've got a really good semi-key date here, 1937S. Yeah, it's got some wear and tear, but with only 1.56 million minted of these, one could argue this is right next to being as key of a date as you can find as well. 37S in extra fine conditions, about a $30 quarter. This is probably not extra fine. Probably, if I'm lucky, very fine. With some of the war in the back, it might only be a fine 15 But either way, it's definitely more than the $3 I paid for it. I'll take it all day. That's a good find. Now let's move over to the 38s. And what's nice about 1938, mint mark or not, they're worth a lot more than face value. I guess I'll just keep you live. This top one's damaged pretty well. But let's see if it's a P or an S. Looks like we got an S. We can only have an S since there's only Philadelphia and San Francisco. It's got some good damage on both sides, which is a shame. Because the 1938S, even though it has 2.8 million minted, in very fine condition, it's still a $15 quarter. This is G4, but probably worth a few more dollars than what I paid for it. This one's in really good shape. And it's a Philadelphia, so not as rare. There's just under 10 million minted of these still, even in very fine condition. It's about a $10 quarter, and I would say this is close to very fine. So pretty happy about that. It's always good seeing 38s. Nine times out of 10 when I do bulk quarter buys, I never see 38s, I never see 37s, I never see 49s, and I rarely see a 32. Now we're going to move on to 1939. And for that year, there really is a couple of ones you want to look for once again, the Denver and the San Francisco Mint. So let me get those stacked up and see if we got some more mint marks. So for 1939, we did find a handful of 1939 Philadelphias and quite a few in pretty decent shape. So I think this is probably the best of the bunch. Not a bad 39 Philadelphia. Put that aside. And we did get two 39 Denver Mints. So it would have been nice to see a San Francisco, which is the more rare of the year. But these are under 10 million minted as well. Still in these conditions... Probably looking at a 5 to $6 quarter. Still double what I paid for it, and I'll take that all day. Now we're going to move on to 1940. And really, there's only one coin we're looking for in 1940, and that's the 1940 Denver. Of course, I'll take a 40S or anything in decent shape as well. We'll get those sorted and see what we find. So as expected, no 40 Denvers. We did get a 40 San Francisco, 
It is more than a common quarter, so it's under 10 million minted. We'll take it. This is probably the best of the 40 Philadelphias. Don't think it'll upgrade in my book, but believe it or not, that's probably the best. So not a lot of finds in 1940. Still, always fun looking for them. Glad that I had the opportunity. Now we're going to move on to 41. Despite there being a couple of better dates with mint marks, 41 DNS, they're very marginally more than a common 41 Philadelphia. I'm really just going to go through those and see what the best one of every single mint is if we've even got more than multiple mints. So in the 41 year, we actually had quite a few nice 1941s, to be honest. There's a couple of nicer ones there, and many of these were actually in pretty good shape. For 41 Denver, nothing's the greatest. They're both pretty worn. This is probably the better of the two, believe it or not. For 41 San Francisco, again, two pretty nice ones. I just don't find a lot of my 41s Washington quarters in better shape. Might be a little bit of rim damage on that one, but I'm pretty happy overall. I think I'll have maybe an upgrade or two for my albums based on what I'm seeing here. We're now moving on to 1942. And the key here is we're looking for a 42D. We want to check for the double die verse. And then of course a 42S is a little bit better value as well. So I'm pulling out the 42Ds to check for doubling and then the 42Ss because they're a little bit better date. Finish turning the 1942s. These are our Philadelphia. That's our Denver's. That's our San Francisco's. Quite a bit of San Francisco's considering it's a little lower mint. They're all pretty trashy. This was the best 42S of the bunch. Not too bad. 42D, no double die verse. It'd be in the Liberty. Wasn't there in any of them. This is the best of the 42D. So a pretty good mix of both DNS and Philadelphia's. And then these two, it's a toss up. For 42 Philadelphia, these are pretty nice coins. Hard to find them in this condition, 77 years old, but I'll take them. Now we're moving on to 1943. And as an FYI, we're looking for the 43P double diverse, extremely valuable. And the 43S double diverse has good value as well. So I've checked the 43s. These are the P's and holy cow, look at this 1943 Philadelphia minted quarter. Unbelievable. Not going to touch that one too much. Going right in the collection. The ones right behind it are not far behind it as far as condition as well. No double diverse on both the 43Ps and the 43Ss. Although, you know, we'll take it. We got a pretty nice 43S here at the end. As well as this is the best 43 Denver. So I'll be keeping the best of the stack to see if it can upgrade my album. This is what I'm pulling aside. The best of each year so far in Mint. Just to check it against that album right there to see if we upgrade anything. Unfortunately, there's not much more to look through for the 44, 45, 46, 50, and 52 that I got, although this is a really nice 1952 as well. But I will be checking these 1950s to see if we have a 1950p or possibly a D with a D over an S repunched mint mark. So both 1950s were, of course, Denver minted quarters. No D over S though for the variety. Still, we had fun going through it. So these are the best coins from every year in mint. Exception when I have a couple of them, it's because I couldn't choose because they both are pretty nice. I'm now going to check against my album to see if we fill any holes and or upgrade any goodies. So this go around, I was able to add three more quarters to the collection, which is nice because now on the first page, we're only missing a 37D. On the second page, we got them all. On the third page, we need a 50S, a 54S, a 55D, and believe it or not, I still need a 1958 Philly. The other good news is I was able to update four of the coins that I had in here that needed updating. That makes me happy. And on top of it, we added some more silver to the stack as well. Hopefully you're enjoying these constitutional silver hunts with me. If you are, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting and thanks for watching.